Hey guys, and welcome to the stream. My name is Mod Simon, and uh, today I'm, I'm joined by RS DOS, um, formerly known as uh, Development Team 3, but you guys were the first to uh, come out and pick a name quite a while ago, which is uh, always good. We're still waiting for a name from uh, Scrum 1, which is... Uh, they yeah, they're, called the the name. Name. they're just they're called the Nameless, nameless at the minute. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. Nameless, I like it. And they're the Nameless until they pick a name. Like the Godless. Right, well, uh, uh, first of all, yeah, just welcome to the stream. We're going to have a, a bit of a live Q&A today, as well as some uh, in-game teasers of some future content. Uh, the first thing I want to do, though, is get you guys to introduce yourself. So if you sort of run around and talk about what your modeling is, obviously, for the for the stream, and then say what your job role is in, uh, in RS-DOS. Sure. Um, my name, or my modern name, is Mod Tim. Um, I'm lead developer and sort of product owner um, for the Dukes. So um, I do a lot of the organisation and uh, simple bits and pieces behind the scenes, I guess. Yep. Uh, I'm Mod Kaosi. I am one of the QA testers within the Dukes. Uh, so yeah, I've been working hard on the quest and just moving on to the next project. Uh, yeah, I'm Mod Olo. Um, I'm a content developer and I currently work on the Easter content at the moment. Not to confuse anyone, but I'm Mod Oli <laughs> and I've uh, been working on Dishonor Among Thieves for the last few months. Right, now Dishonor Among Thieves, we're going to get into that uh, just uh, just in a second, but guys, just a, a rundown of what we're going to go through today. Um, that is going to be the first thing we talk about, Dishonor Among Thieves, uh, formerly known as Zamorak Heist, as a bit of a working title. Um, so we're going to get into that one. I'm sure you guys have heard about it before. You actually were on the, the couch talking about it last time, but it was in a much earlier earlier stage of development. Obviously, it's uh, nearly ready to go out. Um, but you can get involved with us here today. If you've got any questions, please do send them in on the uh, on the Twitch chat. We're also running uh, Twitter as well. We're looking at the hashtag RSTV, so please do get involved. As well as uh, you can go and post threads on the forums. I'm sure we'll find questions from there. I've got some of your questions from the forums as well with me, as well as off Reddit and things like that. So uh, please do get involved during the stream. So. Dishonor Among Thieves, I guess the first thing to, to jun jump on instantly is last time you were on the uh, the couch, it was called Zamorak Heist. Why is it now Dishonor Among Thieves? Um, it was certainly like a working title. We wanted to kind of come up with something that was a little bit more creative. Zamorak Heist was pretty much just, you know, name on the tin exactly what it does. Um, so as always, we kind of brainstorm a load of different ideas and then send it around the team to um, vote and, and pick ones that we think are the most popular. Basically, and uh, I guess uh, just from the title as well, you can you can tell the the kind of crowd that you're going to be working with in, in the heist. They're not going to be uh, the most civilized of people if uh, if they're all if they're all thieves. Uh, that's great. Now we've got a, a question in from uh, Skiller Sam, and he wants to know uh, straight up what are the quest requirements. I guess it's a, it's a good early one to jump on. So yeah. Um, so yeah, the quest requirements are 30 agility, 30 thieving. You'll have to have done missing presumed death because this is a direct sequel to it, and Hazel cult. So they're all relatively low requirements. Now I know uh, missing presumed death that um, doesn't. Is it, I think it requires the world wakes. Um, um, or is, one of, is it one no. of the ones it for the full dialogue? Yeah. So you'll but probably you want need to do the same for for this as well. Yeah. So if you dialogue. want to understand the subquest and the backstory to a lot of the characters, you'll probably be, be better off playing uh, Nomad's Requiem, Ritual of the Marjorat, and the Nadir Saga from Fremenic Sagas. Right. Uh, if you've done all of those, you should have a pretty good idea of all the characters that are involved anyway. Yeah, now let's face it, they're pretty high-level stuff, but um, as, as you can see by those requirements, you said it, it's going to be, I believe it's an intermediate quest yeah, as well. Yeah, an inter intermediate quest. Yeah, so, so those are any sort of recommendations. Um, 30 Agility and Thieving, you, it's pretty accessible, guys, so uh, I really hope you all, you all get involved uh, on day of release. Um, I guess the next question as well, it's, uh, I don't have a name for, for who said it, because I think there's about 50 people, was just, when's it coming out? They want to know. <laughs> yeah. can, we, uh, yeah. can we reveal that? So launch is next, next Monday. Next month. Fantastic. Next, Next Monday, guys. People have been asking me that on Twitter so much. <laughs> <laughs> Be patient. Patient, <laughs> patient. Well, there it is, guys, on Monday. So, uh, assuming uh, nothing goes wrong on our end, it should be uh, all good to start the start of next week. Um, <laughs> now, I guess, uh, uh, oh, you were basically lead developer, I believe, on this one. So this was your, your sort of little child. Um, <laughs> can you give us sort of a, maybe like a one minute overview of, of what we can expect? Obviously, we don't want to give away too many spoilers, okay. but uh, so what's your like, um, pitch or sell pitch? Of so it? basically, for those for everyone who's played Missing Presumed Death, they'll know Siske stole the Stone of Jazz, and he basically set up a battle royale of the gods. And Zamorak had just lost the Battle of Lumbridge, so he was like, you know, well, maybe I'm not going to win a battle royale of the gods. Um, so he's sort no of confidence. yeah. So he's taking the route of sort of subterfuge and trying to pinch it right from out from under Siske's nose. Um, but his faction is sort of in disarray. So it's the player's job to come in, uh, assemble sort of his most loyal, most powerful followers, 
um, some of which you know you might not be 100% sure about, but you know you bring them together and you go off to do this big heist. And the aim of which is to get the stone for Zamorak, but the player obviously has the choice of whether they're doing it to sort of help him or sabotage him, or maybe just go along for fun, pretty much. Right, so you do have uh, a few choices along the way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now, we did get a question from a render on the forums and asked, uh, are there any alternate endings uh, based on the decisions you make, or is it one of these ones where sort of, whilst you have a, a different sort of side in the story, it does play yeah. out uh, um, along a similar path? There's, there's decisions all the way uh, along the way, but yeah, there is like a branching ending where your the choice you make at the end will affect which ending you get. Um, so yeah, hopefully people will be excited to sort of like leave their mark on it. And that can then, would that influence future quests? Yeah, definitely. It's going to have an effect on things that... So know, that can be happen. really exciting when, especially like obviously with the development schedule here at Jagex, sometimes like we, we don't know when we're going to see the next part, and you yeah. guys might. I, <laughs> I definitely don't, but uh, it's good to know that like a decision you make can really impact something down the line. Yeah. And especially with this being an intermediate quest, I imagine when we, uh, when we progress to the next part of this uh, awesome story, we're going we're gonna to probably move it up a bit, be a bit more in-depth. Yeah. Crank uh, it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's usually how we go, and then we end up with a, a, a mental grandmaster, which I, I definitely, I've been really into the storyline, so I, I can't wait for, for we, us to reach the sort of, yeah. not necessarily the finale, because it's such a, it's I guess, with, with, explosive. The, yeah, with, the, with the gods and, uh, and uh, the sixth age as a whole, you, if, you, if you get to too much of a finale, then uh, you know what's going to happen, but yeah. uh, no, it's, it's great to see this, uh, this storyline progress. Um, now, obviously, we're not going to be showing too much in-game stuff. With a quest, guys, we, we want you to be able to play through it, we don't want to spoil it. Um, so there's going to be loads of uh, awesome things that you guys can see, but we do have quite a, a well-presented slideshow that we've got for you. We've got about 20 to 25 images of, uh, of cool things in game, which hopefully you guys will have some knowledge and, and talk through uh, as they appear. Um, so hopefully we're going to get those up on screen in just a little second. Uh, now the first one was actually what was right behind us. Um, and uh, I know everyone's <coughs> seen this one, I believe. Was this even presented at RuneFest as long ago? Yes, this came at RuneFest. It was certainly something where we wanted to kind of like tease um, towards various different elements of the quest without <coughs> giving too much away. Um, so we were quite keen to have, like, say, like the mask on the player's belt. You've got like, some Sliskay's mask. Yeah, I don't like, know if many people spotted that. It's like just yeah. behind the right arm, and that sort of like hinted towards Sliskay's involvement, obviously. It's, we can probably reveal like other elements now, like <laughs> the, the, ritual, the, the ritual stone in the smoke and stuff like that, uh, Moya and Bilrak there. So, yeah, oh, we definitely wanted to provide, stone. Yeah, 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 provide a lot of stuff to read into. Yeah. So yeah, anyone who's cool. played the Nadir saga will yeah. sort of have an idea of and why, from, yeah, of where this is. So. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, that is uh, really, really cool. Um, and where's this next one? And so this is an enormous gate. Let's see. This is basically like a paint over. So what we'll sometimes do is we'll have like the basic environment is there and then the modeler needs like a little bit more detail as to how to model a particular element or a particular area. And then a concept artist will do a paint over. They take sort of a screenshot of the existing map square and then you know paint over it. Um, so this is a paint over of um, one of the doors um, that features in um, the uh, the heist team's hideout. Um, and then that is the sort of the finished oh, wow. article. Um, yeah, I can definitely see some bloom there. The lava is intense. You want to play this quest with uh, graphic settings cranked up. Yeah, <laughs> obviously if you can. Not everyone can, but uh, yeah. you can see where it really comes out there. Definitely. Uh, gives you that uh, blood red feeling, which I guess uh, is what Zamorak's all about. Mm. We wanted to kind of create a feeling of like wondering what is behind those doors, because at some point you will get to sort of experience what's behind them. Yeah, but we're hoping, <coughs> hoping to bust those open with the Floor 61 quest, yeah. when we finally get around to doing that. Um, this is obviously a bit of a wider angle of um, the hideout. Uh, there you can see sort of Bilrak, Zamorak, um, Moya. So yeah, that's one of the more visually impressive areas of the quest. That's fantastic. Oh, wow. That's the ritual stone we were talking stone. about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. a, a lot going on in that. really does look like it's uh, being broken apart. Yeah, though. it's pretty yeah. cool. It looks really cool. Yeah. So yeah. I'm walking through. Is, this, is that a statue? It's just a that's statue. A, yeah. of a big old statue, yeah. Of, uh, of a, is that of a Marge rat? It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 good old friend Players can that. figure that one out. Yeah. This, is, <laughs> I mean, this is the Nomad concept we easy. teased out a few weeks ago. Yeah, it was a little while ago. Um, we put this on the forums and I put it out on Twitter and stuff, and it got really good reaction. Like, because um, we, what we wanted to do with Nomad was keep him as true to the his uh, like original model as we could. Um, we've done that with the animations and stuff as well. So we wanted to see how everyone felt about that, and the reaction was pretty much unanimously. That's it's epic. Awesome. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the original model was uh, for its day. It was very good. But I mean, yeah. I think Nomad's Requiem. We're talking uh, long time ago, a long, long time yeah. ago. 
Uh, and that's is that the in-game rig there? Yeah, yep, this is, is the in-game model. Phenomenal. I mean, like you compare the detail that we get nowadays compared to how it was just a few years ago. Yeah, uh, you can really see how it's come on. Yeah, textures is, uh, have come along a long way. Definitely, definitely a, a fearsome, fearsome-looking man. So uh, it'd be interesting. It's good to finally see him back in a, a storyline. Yeah. Obviously, everyone wondered where <laughs> where he went after you defeated him in battle. Yeah. And we actually saw this one last time. Um, mm -hmm. So this was the the character Jared um, with his uh, his sort of yeah. transforming. So he's from world. he's from the novels originally. Yeah. But we decided to pull him in. And he's now an in-game character, and you'll be recruiting him for the team. He's got the werewolf enthusiasts very excited. And yeah, obviously we've got the models now. Yep. That looks really That's fantastic. the human form. Yeah, I always obviously. used to, I mean, the, the concepts <laughs> that we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the concepts we've had over the years, the concepts have always been brilliant, but translating that into sort of the in-game model, the, the physical, technical capability we have has, has always been a difficulty, but you can really see the improvements that we've got and, uh, and how we can really translate that now into really mm -hmm. impressive looking content and games. So hopefully you guys can all play in uh, the best detail possible and really uh, experience this quest to its full extent. If people uh, like the, uh, the model there of Jared, you're going to get to uh, wear his cape. As a, as a reward, so that's obviously what is that we're one of the there. Just the quest rewards straight away. Uh, that's one of the quest yeah. rewards, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any uh, interest in stats on that one, or is it more of a cosmetic kind of... Uh so we've tiered that to sort of an intermediate level. Uh, it's got some extra benefits to it. Right. Uh, sort of geared towards thieving with the... Uh, with the thieving requirement. With the thieving sense. queen. Uh, <laughs> leaving <laughs> theme, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, as usual, all those cape benefits will be uh, transferred to the completion escape as well. So does the, the fact that you've got a reward that hints towards thieving, does that suggest that we might be successful in stealing the stone, or is this something that we're not going to be revealing? Uh, no comments. <laughs> 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 I like it, I like it. Uh, we've got lots, uh, lots more in-game uh, stuff there, it's brilliant to see. Uh -huh. It gives that really sort of dark, intense feel of uh, yeah. going a, on, a, on a heist. Uh -huh. uh, at any point a player's going to be really vulnerable? Is it, is it anything, do we know if it's a safe uh, quest, or um, is there going to be a risk of death? Basically, the the feeling that I wanted to create, sort of uh, designing it, was that the whole time throughout, the pressure's like mounting, it's ramping up, it gets more sort of action packed and fast paced. And you pretty much like towards the end, as the heist sort of heats up, you, you really aren't sure how it's going to turn out. Um, and you do sort of get to like the brink of defeat. And yeah, you definitely, you'll have to sort of, uh, you know, figure out what you want to do and what choices you want to make. It's going to be difficult for players to do that, I think. Fantastic. Now, uh, if we get on to uh, some more of the re rewards, then obviously it is an intermediate quest, so um, it might not be quite as elaborate as some of the things we've seen with things like Plague's End last year with uh, like tons of XP for everyone, but what can people expect from uh, from uh, Dishonored Among Thieves? So yeah, you've got your standard rewards, so XP in uh, agility and thieving, giving a little bit of dungeoneering out as well, even though it's not a requirement. Well, I could see there was definitely some involved. So that was to, yeah. d to do with theming, you really. Could, you could really see the... I uh, saw some warp floor aspects in there. Yeah. yeah. With the, uh, um, we've got a pet as well. Don't know, do we want to reveal that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure people will on the day, it's fine. You'll, you'll find it's out fine. in the uh, in the BTS, which is coming soon. Oh, so right, there you go. Uh, yeah, wait, wait until the BTS. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. wait until the BTS. You'll see yeah. that on Friday. Yeah, I've seen some of the yeah. BTS. It's going to be an interesting one, guys. If it's you guys are frequent <laughs> watchers yeah. of yeah. the... We had a lot of fun filming. It's fun one making. Yeah. If people saw one. my uh, acting in the in the Broken Home <laughs> <laughs> and were impressed by that, I've really, uh, I've really upped the game in this one. Yeah, uh, I have actually seen some clips. I'm not quite sure whether it's a, a, a truly Oscar way for it. I would do no better. <laughs> I would you do no you better. guys definitely need to watch it though. It's yeah, going to be fun. No, so that'll be, uh, that'll be out on Friday. That's the, the video team that are actually just sitting behind us uh, through the wall. So uh, they're working hard on that one. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. So do uh, stay tuned for that. Um, so also upgrading one of the rewards for Missing Presumed Death oh as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so the, um, the, uh, the mask that you get from Missing Presumed Death, um, that's getting an upgraded version with uh, some extra features and such like on it. With that mask, is that the one that can you can transform it to transform? like yeah, light and dark versions? Yeah. yeah. Mm. And will each version have a, an improved? Uh, theme, it's or is it's it unified the, into it's one? it's unified into one. Right. So regardless of whether you're a, a light or a dark player, you can still enjoy it. Okay. So uh, I mean, you talked about we can now reveal a few more of the characters that, that might be involved. Obviously, last stream we talked about uh, Jared a lot. Um, so who who else do we know now? And we can sort of tease that's going to be involved in the heist. We've uh, pretty much we've revealed everyone. Pretty much everyone. So everyone. So run through them quickly. Yeah, I've, I've let me think. So <laughs> obviously you've got Zamrak, and you've got uh, Bilrak and Moya. Um, you then you'll be going off to recruit um, General Kazard, Haz um, Hazil, and obviously Jared. 
um, Nomad, uh, Zemarigo and Inakra, and Lord Dicarius. Um, that's the full list, I think. I think that's, that's everyone. It. So not all of them like go off to do the heist with you. Um, obviously, Zamorak uh, doesn't come with you. He's sending you and a group of them um, to go and do it. But yeah, the majority of them you will actually take with you, and you'll have to sort of use everyone's powers to, to get past everything. Fantastic. Now, there was a, a question that I saw on the forum that I really liked, and it said, uh, is it difficult to pack in um, such an important storyline into just an immediate, uh, intermediate quest? Obviously, yeah. you have to be <coughs> The, the answer is just definitely yeah, because it's not just one storyline we have to like. You have to remember that we have to draw each of th these important people uh, characters into the quest, and each one of them has their own backstory. Um, some like Nomad players haven't seen for years and years, and everyone's desperate to like find out like resolutions for all their little storylines and more information about that. So it's not just the storyline of the quest we have to pack in. It's like all these other ones. So um, yeah, we you have to be careful about letting people who want to explore those, all those storylines do that, but then not forcing everyone to listen to it if they don't want to, so, yeah. It really showed in development as well, because everybody was putting their all into it. You yeah. could really you feel it from everybody. Yeah, fantastic. Now, um, I guess the, one of the last things to ask before we move on to some more content is, uh, on a personal note, would you, would you have a favourite sort of path that you can take during the quest of, uh, would you choose to help Zamorak all the way and try and steal the stone, or...? Uh, what, what would you recommend to me? What's your? Uh, I, you, I think Zamorak really misunderstood, it. just yeah. from yeah. really early content. So I'm definitely going to go through the Zamorak in route. Yeah. Honestly, from from developing like Missing Between Death and this, just just making them and enjoying like writing the dialogue for the characters. I'm sort of like, I've ended up pro Sliske and pro Zamorak. <laughs> so I just, I don't know what I'd choose really. They they've both got some really awesome aspects to them. So yeah, I'm interested to see what everyone picks. And if I think. Zamorak after losing Battle of Umbridge isn't that popular. Yeah. So I'm interested to see if this quest sort of swings a few people. Yeah, it swings it in its favour. Yeah. That's quite an interesting one. Uh, and I guess um, if there are obviously multiple choices you can take, I know with a, a couple of recent quests it has been able to be replayable. Is this going to be one people get to, to do again or is this a, a one time only so you've got to sort of choose wisely? Yeah, just a one time only. Uh, mm. You know, doing like kind of repeatable quests unfortunately takes a lot extra yeah work. Oh, i can imagine so uh, we have to like pick when we do that very carefully we, we pushed this like right to the limit as well we did as much as we possibly could Fantastic. um in the time space so yeah i hope people uh, appreciate yeah. it <laughs> certainly a decent long size certainly quite a lot of different mechanics and different things to kind of get involved in and do <coughs> quests. so it should hopefully feel like quite a chunky quest and do we have a you say it's going to be sort of quite in depth and long do we have a, a rough time estimate there that you can expect because I mean, Ooh, intermediates actually, typically you expect to be under an hour but it sounds like there's really I'd hope, quite a hope lot I think it would take more than an hour for over an hour Brilliant. if um, you're reading all the dialogue and stuff definitely because there's yeah there's a lot of dialogue to sink your teeth into so yeah mm, but like you were saying if you don't want to go into all the backstory you don't have to <coughs> yeah. but it's still going to take you a good chunk of time I think so it should be a good experience awesome well, I can't wait and uh, luckily I don't actually have to wait very long because mm -hmm. uh, it's coming out on Monday <laughs> Uh, so guys, yeah, Dishonor Among Thieves, definitely check it out. Now, the next thing we're going to move on to talk about is the next project you guys uh, are, are coming up to. We briefly mentioned this actually uh, last time you, you guys were on the couch, and uh, that's the Easter event 2015 um, mm. is one that you guys picked up. So does anyone want to run through what pit players are sort of uh, can expect in the Easter event 2015, yeah. where you've taken it? And uh, I think it's worth mentioning first that we, you know, we really tried this time around to get players' input on things. To kind of so you know we started off a thread on the forums and you know really kind of listened and it was really useful because there was a lot of really meaty um, like posts about what players were after um, so we took quite a lot away from that you know predominantly we wanted to make something that felt a bit more quest like as opposed to being something that's a bit more like a, a D and D or something yeah. that's too grindy um, we very much wanted to make something that the player could kind of complete in one play session um, so previously we've kind of had mechanics whereby you, you have to come back each and every single day over <coughs> you know, at least a week period. Um, but we wanted to make something so that people, we appreciate people have other things they want to do in the game. And a holiday event is something that they can kind of get stuck into, have a bit of fun, and then perhaps move back to the other bits and pieces that they're focusing on within the game. Um, and we wanted to make something that was, and we realised <coughs> we needed to, to make something that was quite light-hearted. Um, going back to sort of old, sort of holiday events, something that's a little bit more light-hearted, a bit of fun, yeah, absolutely. a bit of sort of RuneScape humour. That's yeah, good to know that, so players will be able to just go through all of this in just one session, and 
Yeah, I mean, there have been quite a few recently. It's, it's a different style. It's not necessarily a, a bad way to go when people can get have a lot to do each and every day. Um, but some people obviously like the holiday events of old, and you can sort yeah. of just go through it all in one go and, and get that reward at the end of it. Um, so, yeah, should we go into the sort of the, the premise? What is, what, sure. how are we going to set up Easter? I can stop coughing. <laughs> <laughs> That might help. Um, so uh, we're back to the Easter Bunny again for the first time in a while. Um, and the Easter Bunny's been going on his travels uh, and he's come back to discover that uh, his factory has been overrun by imps. And they've taken it all apart, thrown everything away. Um, and uh, the imps are, <laughs> due to an industrial accident, <laughs> um, there's a large number of Jodinkos nearby as well. Um, so the imps would like a, a pet. Uh, a Janinko pet, and they won't stop destroying this factory until they get a Janinko pet. So your aim as a player is to try and help these imps get the, the right Janinko pet for themselves. So it's a little random, but... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it definitely <laughs> seems, uh, if, we, if we go on the Easter Bunny, I saw exactly where we're heading with that, and then uh, imps it and Janinko, it's not your stereotypical Easter Bunny. Not, not exactly, but I mean, the, the Easter Bunny has got a history of uh, playing around with genetics. Uh, what with the uh, chocolate chocolate treats. Treats and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the like. That is uh, true. This time he's gone a little too far. <laughs> so we've got to try and uh, find the Easter Bunny, or oh, the Imp, sorry, uh, a Jodinko mm -hmm. pet for them. Um, now, how, how can players go about doing that then? Um, so there's, uh, there are caves nearby where there are um, Jodinkos present. They have eggs uh, of various types. And uh, the Imps can hatch the eggs. So you, can ha you, you get to help the Imps ha hatch these eggs to make Jodinkos. But they're not quite the right Judinko. I mean, everybody wants a perfect Judinko. Of course. Um, so, uh, with uh, the help of a friendly, convenient dwarf... Um, the <laughs> Conveniently there. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. Um, they uh, will splice these eggs together um, to make a better egg, hatch that, and then um, hopefully that'll uh, appease the imps. And we've actually got a, a concept art image of uh, an egg machine, I believe, that. Is this gonna, what's going to be doing the, the splicing? Um, I think this is exactly it. So uh, part of the I haven't uh, seen this. <laughs> part, part of your job will be to get this machine working, and then to use the machine and try and make um, a, a better egg. Uh, it does look rather insane, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> My immediate feeling is a, some, a somewhat cross between a gramophone and Doctor Robotnik. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting that feel. It's definitely got the egg theme to it. <laughs> <laughs> We're thinking much like machines you might have like in Willy Wonka or something like that where <laughs> yeah, something yeah. goes in at the beginning and something weird and strange Lots happens. Lots of noises, yeah, moving parts. Things go in and out, out you just don't yeah. really know what's going on Some and then smoke. something comes out the end. Um, you're like, ta-da. Um, <laughs> we can see the animations that <laughs> yeah. done for that. Oh, and and this is uh, uh, the yeah. nests that yeah. the, uh, you can st uh, use your thieving skill to uh, steal these uh, eggs from these nests as well. Um, there are, you could also use hunting and combat as well. Right. Uh, to get not, we're not limiting too much. But so with those, uh, obviously you mentioned hunting, thieving and combat, are there going to be any requirements to actually... There are no requirements for anything, uh, yeah. and it's also available for free to play. Yeah, it's entirely free to play, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, Brilliant. So if, if it's involved in those skills, can, uh, can players expect some kind of reward in those? Uh, yes, there will, there will be um, experience rewards. You will get experience to some extent for doing um, the various, uh, you know, if you kill monsters, you get combat experience. If you steal eggs, you will get thieving experience. Um, but uh, there will also be rewards from the quest itself. We haven't finalised exactly what those rewards will be. Brilliant. Right, now I guess there's only so much we can talk about. We've actually um, got a, a test already. We're going to be jumping into game. So uh, you guys can have a look at uh, one of the pieces of concept that we just showed you for about uh, 10 to 15 seconds, and then we'll be back and we'll be ready to jump into game with the Easter event 2015. Okay, so we're, uh, we're over on the PCs, and I can see the Easter Bunny, <laughs> which is a good start. Um, yes, we have the Easter Bunny here. Um, we haven't done any work on him, but... Uh, yeah, we wanted to give an idea of like where you start it, so, so it's, it's starting near Port Serim. Yeah. Um, so, relatively why, easily why successful. Port was it just... Uh, uh, it's where the Easter Bunny was last time, well, near where the Easter Bunny right. was last time. He's moved his entry. I mean, obviously, Armadale's dropped a tower on top of him, so 
you know, he's, he's had to do a little bit of reworking. Um, but uh, yeah, so just finding a free spot. It's hard. It's hard these days. It, it can be that. really. Yeah, it can be. <laughs> it can be yeah. there's, uh, there's so much content around there. Mm -hmm. Um, so I assume is this uh, this blue square is a bit um, of a placeholder. Uh, right I think now. that's 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 quite <laughs> definitely a, a body, a little uh, a entrance uh, hole of some sort. Yeah, yes. you have to use <laughs> your imagination. <laughs> fine. It's brilliant. It's, it's good to see uh, <laughs> placeholder things. We like it when we see things that are still. Shows that it's not all just click a button and it's there. You've got to actually uh, put some time and effort into it. Yeah, so yeah I mean, see. yeah, we, we've at least got to find something or make something. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to. Um, so we can go down here and we see a slightly redone version of the the factory. Um, this is still a little bit more to be done, but not much. And I think we're missing some textures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, and, and this body's not really facing the right way. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've, uh, uh, the, the imps that are scattered around here have, have destroyed things. And, and are these the imps that you're going to have to talk to then to find out what... Uh, um, yeah, so there's an imp ringleader um, who, who's sort of running the, running the show. There's some other imps around, but they... Flavor yeah. really. Um, so yes, th this is the imp that will actually do it. I think I've completed the quest on this one. Yeah, so there's not much to say. Now, but yeah, we don't want to <laughs> run through the whole thing and, and spoil it for everyone. But it's um, uh, it's good to see the area. It's nice, uh, nice large area. And is this going to be instance, or will you be able to see other players running around at um, the same time? In this area, there'll be other players. We've got Brilliant. some caves as well. I can go there. And, um, I do like the uh, the good old quest feel of uh, on day of release when there's like hundreds and hundreds of people running around. You can always ask for help and uh, so and just see other people lost in the chaos. Which is yeah. Uh, so we have uh, the, the these areas. These areas because they're more interactive. Um, they, they are instance, but they are shared instances. So there'll be a, a relatively small number of players right, in okay. each one. So you can still so got some hopefully you're not that you feeling can take in or not feeling too well. They're shared. But I mean, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, hopefully you're not feeling too crowded, but in this area, yeah, we'll have as many players as there are players. <laughs> hopefully. Should be good, should be good. So uh, there are no requirements to get into this, which is brilliant, and it's free to play, which mm -hmm. is always nice to see. Mm -hmm. um, so you talked about there will be like some uh, some XP rewards. Are they all gained from doing sort of the, the, the mini quest, as it were, or can you do uh, a repeatable um, thing to get as much? So the, the, the current situation is that we've, we will have a, a sort of reward for doing the quest, you, you know, as you as you complete, it's not a quest, so the mini quest. Uh, yeah. As you complete it, you will get a big chunk of experience or uh, of some sort. We haven't, as I say, finalised exactly what that will be. Um, we will, uh, however, as, I, as I've said, uh, we, you will get experience from killing the creatures, for example. Um, there's some little mini games which um, um, will also give you some experience. So you should get some experience out of this. Right. Um, Good at combat. Small, <laughs> small Easter Jadinko, is that a placeholder name? Um, oh. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> so I, like, I like the, uh, the bluntness of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we tried to think of, of, good, uh, of good names, but to be fair, it's, uh, it's not massively easy without them becoming very unwieldy. It's not <laughs> so, yeah. no, I saw a, a ton of different machines in the other room. Have, the, have they all got a specific purpose? Or um, no, the machines from the other were, were used in the Easter 2010. Right. Um, wow, so going back uh, some, five some years. I think yeah. it's 2010, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's 2010. So, so a few of the uh, more, more veteran players may, will recognise yes. um, um, where they, they may have some role to play in the in the content, but mostly mm -hmm. they're scenery at the moment. Yeah, like this is, you, you spend the majority of your time other than if you're in here kind of like talking to other players and such like and figuring out what's going on, you spend a fair amount of time yeah. in, in the new caves and such that have been made. Th there's uh, a lot of puzzle content in this as opposed to uh, more you know, sort of combat orientated. It's, it's a fair amount of thinking that you might have to do. Now I saw uh, a question from the Twitch chat, but I think it's, uh, it's pretty easy to answer is uh, what someone's asking when when can we expect to see this well uh, I think the thing <laughs> with a, an Easter event is uh, well, it's yeah, quite I, I, I likely mean, to occur uh, we're, we're a little worried it might slip a couple of weeks but <laughs> 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 probably around <laughs> Easter um, there we go so we've also got a question in Portmore actually um, is about Iron Man accounts obviously um, everything that we developed now has to be taken into consideration so uh, Iron Man um, won't be able to get the, the full sort of level of experience gained from this. Um, the, the, uh, I can't remember what, uh, what it's something that we've like we're like kind of like toying with it because yeah we want to kind of make it available to a certain extent but yeah we need to make sure that the, the XP rates and such like are mm. suitable. Yeah, um, we're at that stage now where kind of like the crux of the the kind of the core mechanics and the core stuff is there. It's then about polishing it and with that polishing it comes like the balancing and comes mm. kind of 
those finer those finer questions to a certain extent. I mean, I mean part of the point for this we, we know, is to avoid grinding anyway, but um, so it shouldn't necessarily be the best way of getting experience at all times. But certainly for Ironman, we don't want to encourage them to be doing something that's only there now. I mean, that sort of defeats the point of Ironman. Yeah. So. Now we've got a, a question in from Secret Name Twenty Two, and he asks, "Can we get old Easter awards from this event?" I know you typically be able to get old um, emotes. That's mm -hmm. usually like an automatic unlock. Will we get yeah. any more um, other awards? Aside we, from that? we will unlock the old emotes that most people would probably already have. Uh, but uh, if you've missed uh, maybe uh, the last <laughs> one or two, so um, you'll be able yeah. to we haven't. No haven't intention on giving existing yeah. items there yeah. from past I mean, events. Yeah. yeah, if we don't want to be giving away any bunny ears, I think that would uh, <laughs> <laughs> go uh, go a bit too far in the uh, negative sentiment there. So uh, we've also a question saying. Uh, are the Gothixian butterflies coming back? Um, I don't I know. know have we made a decision on that? Sure, actually. They were extremely popular last I year. Uh, well, they gave you good experience. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> I say that, I don't actually know, but I, I did them and enjoyed them a lot. Yeah. I think they uh, were pretty good. Well, I, when I used them, they were pretty good XP, but yeah. Nice little yeah things nice I'd hope so. Um, I'd hope so. There's, there's no particular problem with us doing it. But it's, uh, it's just the sounds of the players want them. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. And uh, I, I see this one here. Um, do we get a Jadinko pet too? Well, I think it would be a, a bit unfair cute. to spend all this time making a pet for an imp and not to get one yourself. So okay. yeah, yes. I guess <laughs> so that's part <laughs> of the reward. Now, I guess the choice is: do you get to choose what yours looks like, or is it a pretty? Uh, um, it's uh, pretty fixed. Pretty fixed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's fixed I was going to say. Um, I think it would be quite difficult to everyone have, have their own custom. Uh, it it one would be a bit, a bit beyond the scope of an Easter event. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so with the obviously we have to for the imp we have to make him a, a custom. A custom sort of shooting pet, just like he wants it. And uh, now, with that, is it going to be the same for everyone? Is it different for everyone? Is there sort the, of a the rotation puzzle, each day? The puzzle is unique to each player. Right. Um, okay. Wow. So, so you can't get too much help from your friends. You can you, get you, a, there's no the rough idea. Yeah, so you, right. you, you can get help in working out what sort of things you should be doing, but you will have to work it out for yourself. We will, we're not going to make it too difficult. Yeah, <laughs> although much, uh, although I tried. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, I guess one of the final things to ask really is just uh, how long can we expect to, to be in an in, in Easter event this year? It's a difficult question. I'd hope, <laughs> for, I'd hope for at least half an hour. Yeah, um, sort of aiming you know, around there. Around about that mark, I guess. If, if, if you just space through everything. If you just like plough through you know, it, yeah. Don't, um, don't worry too much about the, the story and all that. Uh, it's good to be able to cater to, to both sides of things yeah. as well. Yeah, so and we're trying to make it so that if you want to kind of go back and you know do a little bit of training there and you know help your mates or chat to your mates whilst they're yeah. playing it through, then it should feel possible to do that as well. Or, or um, play some of the games again if you want to have a, another go at the egg combining. Yeah. So it is repeatable then, which is... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah most good. things should be repeatable. I mean, at the moment they're not, but yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. Obviously, <laughs> we've still got a little bit of time. Um, which is uh, which is really good. So yeah, yeah guys, if you've got any more questions, do uh, do put them in. Uh, if we've got anything else to show um, in game, or have we pretty much shown the. Uh, um, I'm not sure. There's a great deal more that we can show without spoiling. Yeah, no, absolutely. Stuff, we don't want to. It's Can't always it's always a delicate balance. It is. Yeah. No, yeah it's, 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 we sort of we want to show you everything, but then also uh, if we show it all now, then it's not going to be exciting for you guys on uh, on day release. So we we, we do want to make it as exciting <laughs> as possible. All right. Well, uh, what we'll do then is we'll, uh, we'll we'll jump back over to the couch. We'll rejoin. Uh, Mod KFC and uh, Mod Ollie, and then we'll go in to talk about um, some other things that you've uh, you've got coming up in the future, as well as uh, we'll guys will answer your questions from the chat. So do send them in. All right, welcome back, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed that little in-game preview. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. I know you've uh, you've been struggling a little bit under the weather, but uh, <laughs> yes. you, got, you got through it just about. So uh, yeah, much uh, much appreciated for that. Like in-game demo, obviously, be nice to have shown things for just on among thieves, but we can't always tease uh, too many quest bits because we are a bit sensitive. We have to play to it the, soon anyway. So there's a few law hounds out there that are desperate to get mm -hmm. the story out themselves. It's interesting when we talked about how uh, sometimes with quests, like you do get the people that spam through the uh, the chat, and some people read through everything. I definitely, uh, I'm a bit ashamed to say, I, I'm, I'm typically one of the guys that would steamroll through <laughs> most of the chat, but um, when it's been rolling around to some of these uh, these 6A storylines, it's been really, really interesting to 
they really feel like they're on a sort of a magnanimous scale when you're really getting involved with the gods. So uh, it's been a lot of fun and uh, really looking forward to, to that one. Um, so we've got a few more questions coming in from the chat. Uh, we've got uh, Meet Dave, and he's asking, uh, will the strange power be explained in this quest? And I believe that was from Twitter. Uh, yes. Sure <laughs> <laughs> answer. Um, because that's something that the strange power, um, basically when Moya came along, um, it kind of left, the strange power was like, oh, Majra has died in Gilanor, and it left it as, oh, it must have been Bilrak. And obviously Bilrak has turned up in this quest, so people are sort of like, oh, what about the strange power? That must be something, you know, you must be retconning or something like that. But it, w it will be explained, and uh, it is quite a, I think it's quite a cool um, bit of lore to find out. So you'll have to keep your eyes open. It's been a long one coming, hasn't it? I mean, I don't yeah. know. I can't actually remember the exact date at which the strange power occurred. But it was a few years ago. Demon oh, well, release. The day of it, was, yeah. it was a teaser for Dungeoneering. Yeah. Mm. So long, long, long. This must be five it. years ago. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There we go. So uh, it's great that's going to be finally explained. Some more mm -hmm. questions from uh, from Twitter. I'm seeing. Uh, are there any post quest content uh, for this quest? Uh, uh, a teeny weeny bit. There's some, there's some like um, so chests you can get XP from, yeah. and yeah, yeah a little bit of post quest dialogue. But like we said, we sort of uh, we really pushed development to the limits, so we didn't have too much time to add in post quest stuff. Uh, some of those quests uh, do they require? Obviously, we were talking about how. Um, some of the things like uh, Ritual of the Marge Rat and the World Wakes uh, aren't necessarily prerequisites, but um, with the Missing Presumed Death, they were required for extra dialogue. Will they be required for all the I think there's a couple of lines, chests, so that's all. Not, uh, not the reward chest. No, so that's so. just the dialogue. Then. Well, yeah. one thing from Missing Presumed Death was that people really disliked that dialogue was hidden from them if they hadn't completed certain quests. So we've it. taken that feedback on board, and basically we're like, Based on your previous decisions in like other stuff, like you will get slightly different lines and stuff, but you're not going to miss out on any law or yeah. anything like that. So yeah, that's good to see. Yeah, it's nice to see always uh, player feedback taken on board. We do always see comments <laughs> of, uh, that people don't think that uh, we do read all their comments, but we do honestly on the forums, on Reddit, on Twitter, everything that comes in, we always read, and it's uh, and hopefully you've seen, especially over the past few years, I really think that um, we've become better as a. As a, as a RuneScape team of taking on board player feedback and getting that into game and really shows in uh, in the quests that come out. So, uh, we've got a question from Ryan PM. He asks, will Dishonor Among Thieves uh, rectify Hazeel's place in RuneScape? Some of us doesn't re doesn't re uh, resurrect him in the Hazeel court quest. Now that is a, a long, yep. long... <laughs> so the short answer go. is, he's Hazeel back for everybody. Yeah, he's back was, for everyone. There was like a Schrodinger's Hazeel kind of situation, <laughs> <laughs> we call it, where... Yeah, some people he's there, some people he's not. But um, this quest resolves that because it was such an it was like a really annoying situation to have where we have this cool character which we can't use because he's dead for some people. Yeah. So yeah, we've um, we've definitely rectified that, and you'll find out like how we've done that in the quest, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like we have done quest reworks in the past, but it'd be a bit of a, a waste of almost like development time to go back and yeah. rectify so it's the same for everyone in a previous yeah, quest. Exactly. Um, to then, yeah, like yeah, your your choice in that quest, whether you chose for him to live or die, is obviously has an effect on yeah. um, you know what people yeah, say to you in the in it, it's, it's mainly just dialogue, and his model would be different because he missed the ritual if you didn't revive him beforehand. Yeah. Oh, so. There we go. So uh, that will still play an effect. That's really cool to know. Um, we've got uh, a question from Perforos, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, and uh, on Twitter he says, "Does Zamorak know Zaros has returned? If not, can we inform him?" Form him of this, um, which should be quite an interesting one because obviously that was uh, that quite sure a recent thing. Wonder. Yeah, you can you can tell him <laughs> <laughs> basically, um, but it's a choice. It's it, yeah, it's like a it's, it's post quest because um, you can basically one of the rewards. It's kind of a reward is you can go back and hang out with Zamorak um, in his hideout and stuff, and you can go and talk to him about various different things. Um, one of the options will be to tell him. Like maybe you're doing it to try and scare him, or maybe give him a bit of information to try and help him out. But yeah, you can you can basically tell him. But it really does set up for uh, future quests yeah. with uh, mm -hmm. a lot of these things happening. And then, uh, just so we make everyone clear, if you've just tuned in halfway through the stream, um, quest requirements for uh, Dishonor Among Thieves, which yep. comes out Monday. Uh, let's have a quick recap. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, intermediate quest uh, 30 agility, 30 thieving, um, missing presumed death because this is a sequel, Hazeel cult you'll have to have done. Uh, the combat is all scaling, but we recommend about 60, 61 above, uh, and up from that, and right. obviously gear. Yeah, so nothing, relevant to that. Nothing too high. Um, and yeah, um, access to Mauritania. Uh, yeah, you'll need access to Mauritania as well. So do priest in peril or go beat up that ghoul. Um, and yeah, if, if you want the full story, I'd recommend doing uh, Nomad's Requiem, Ritual of the Marjorat, and um, the Nadir Saga as well. 
if you've done all those, you should have a good understanding of all the characters then. Brilliant. Now, uh, uh, if you guys have got any more uh, questions, keep them firing in. We've got uh, one from uh, Sweet Like You, and he says, will there be any voice acting in this quest? Unfortunately not for, for this one. It does take a lot of effort, um, I know. It can slow yeah, the process. It's unfortunately one that takes quite <coughs> a surprising amount of work to actually develop it, um, to put it in. Um, yeah, it's a so huge amount of work. We have to kind of, you know, because it's not something that we do in-house, it's not like, you know, we just get people around the office to kind of do it. You know, we get an external studio to yeah, actually, exactly. you know, Professional actors the and then, you like know. For Miss and Zoom Death, I had to go down to London and, like, you know, this, it takes multiple days sometimes and um, we had to Skype into them and it's, yeah, it's, it's all sorts of hard work and basically we, just, we wouldn't have had time yeah. to... I imagine it's a lot of fun, but it's just something oh, it's so you much can't fun. do every time. <laughs> it's great fun. Like, I would love to do it personally yeah. and mm -hmm. for the players, but... Yeah, the quest would be like, you know, nowhere near as long yeah. we did that, so. Now, it's not to say that we only reserve voice acting for special quests, because I think this will be quite a, an amazing one for all the players, but yeah. it's just a certain few when there is time in the development schedule, we do try and they'll always add that in, but uh, no, unfortunately not for this one, but I still think it's going to be an amazing playthrough. And then Boy 12 asks, uh, will the Shadow Eyes from Fate of the Gods be useful in Samurai Heist? Or so I think this is in reference to being able to see into the Shadow Realm? Um, Without yeah. the ring of visibility? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to, like, we can't really give you an explanation because mm. it's kind of spoilery, but. Well, um, there we go. Mm, no? Yeah, <laughs> Fate, of the Gods, Fate of the Gods isn't re a requirement, so yeah. it, won't, yeah. it won't have any effect, really. Yeah. That's okay. So, uh, uh, thanks for all the questions coming in. Do keep them firing in, we'll try and get uh, any answer before the end. But we'll try and move on. Uh, we're going to talk about, obviously, we've talked uh, about the project going out. Uh, right next week, we'll talk about Easter, which is your next major project. Um, so what have you got coming up in the future that you can talk about? Um, so we've got a couple of projects. Uh, the first one we'll mention is the livestock project. Um, so this is one that's like the really very early stages of concept. Um, it's We're basically looking at what the core mechanics for that are going to be um, at the moment. Um, it's something where we wanted to kind of start off with something relatively small to begin with as an initial stage, so that we can kind of say, there were, there were basically so many different ideas and so many different mechanics and the way the project could go. We wanted to say, okay, well, let's just look at what the core mechanics are and the core way that it works, try it with, as we probably will do, three different livestock creatures, um, see how that works, but build it with a mind to being able to expand it in future if that is something that everybody is very keen on us to do. So just as a, a premise, the, the livestock update is going to be a, an expansion to the, the farming skill, I believe. Yes, say. yeah. So instead of using, instead of sort of um, farming with crops, farming with live animals instead. Which is uh, it's quite an interesting turn for the skill. I mean, it's pretty much all been revolved around farming with just normal plants other than I guess is it the uh, the jade vine? There's a little bit of. Uh, <laughs> is guess, it a creature? Yeah. Is it a plant? You don't really know, but uh, I mean, mostly it's uh, pretty static things that mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to have to uh, go around and uh, and kill. But is it? Uh, are we talking about stereotypical livestock? Are we talking cows? Are we um, talking a bit more RuneScape themed things like jadinkos? Are they going to be? <laughs> we're thinking it would again? be definitely good to have a mixture. So we're thinking like for the the initial creatures to have more like perhaps if it's three creatures, we have like maybe two or traditional livestock options that you might normally associate in the real world to being livestock, and then perhaps one that is a fantasy creature specific to RuneScape. Yeah. I think the idea is that we don't want to repeat too much content, so killing cows for cow hides, you can just go do that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. As you said, it's in a more of a concept phase. Is there a yeah. place where players can, can go to get involved and, uh, and put some of their ideas forward? And yeah, as always, I mean, there's been quite a few sort of threads already and quite a few stuff on Rune Labs, but certainly we'd like, when we've got a teeny bit further, it would be nice to kind of like open that up a little bit more and get a little bit more input on yeah. that for sure. Fantastic. I was going to mention it a little bit later, but now you do bring it up Rune Labs um, as, a, as a concept as a whole. Obviously, we've gone through the, the first phase. I'm sure you guys have all been uh, aware of uh, the first round of voting. Now the second round of voting is open. Um, there's some awesome ideas on there, so do go check it out. It's on the homepage, there's a link from there. Um, you can vote now and uh, give your support to the awesome ideas there. Um, but I think the cool thing that we can sort of say today um, is that the, the next round, which I believe will be uh, March, we're gonna sort of, it's gonna go by calendar month. Um, the, the outcome of that is gonna be down to, to your team, so that'll be another one of your future projects. Um, so you guys look into that, is it a bit unnerving not knowing exactly what the players are going to come out with? Or mm -hmm. I, a yeah. <laughs> bit. I think it's, I think it's great, it's really nice, it's really nice, it gives you that extra little bit of comfort knowing that there's a project that 
people really back and people really want from the start. Yeah, um, it removes that uncertainty of like, is it going to be a hit, is it not going to be a hit? Exactly, yeah. and that just helps make it even more, you know, the positivity yeah. on working on the project is from the start then. Right. Um, it leaves it quite up in the air about like, how much will be down to us, because it might be something that is really well defined and we just have to go and make, but it might be something that's like, oh, we want you to do like, like a quest involving blah blah, blah or something <laughs> like something like that, which, where we'd have like you know loads to design and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's quite up in the air in terms of that. Now uh, the first round of Rune Labs obviously ended with uh, it's quite interesting. There was uh, we, we asked for medium ideas. There was a lot of small ideas, but because um, that's what everyone wanted, we wanted to sort of reinforce that, and we uh, said to the players we're going to make two of those. That's gone through an in-game poll, and you'll be seeing those in-game um, in a, a few minutes down the line. It's going to be a little while for. Uh, for Davo, um, Davo's teams to develop, but you'll get there, and uh, it'd be really cool to see those in game. Um, but as far as the the size of the project that you're going to be working on, can we sort of tell players what they might be expecting to to see what they can submit during the March window for Rune Labs? So we're we're planning on a large size project. Um, what you know, we should be able to produce something pretty meaty. Um, but what we what is undecided at the moment um, is what like the lower threshold of that has been. Right. Um, so what we've done so far is we've kind of left it, you know, relatively open, so that if people came up with a load of small ideas, then you could do a batch of small ideas. But what we're contemplating doing, which would be interesting to see what the players think, um, is actually specifying a lower threshold and saying it's either me you know medium or large or just large only large options. Yeah, I guess um, we, we don't want to get accepted, uh, in the situation where we still have lots of smalls, then we do three small updates um, and then it would just be uh, a continuation of that so it'd be, it'd be really great for for you guys so you can be really creative with uh, with large updates and get tons of storyline and that's not limited to it's not really a large small, quest a if you've still got small ideas you can save them for later rounds yeah exactly this uh, is definitely it's going to be running all year so uh, no problems with that and uh, what uh, what examples can you give of maybe a large update that you've worked on in the past so to give a, an idea of scale for players when they get around to that um so Good example. It, it's hard to know exactly what a large <laughs> update is. It's, it's a bit of a vague term. Yeah, I know that there's a few examples on the from the Rune Labs Rune Labs page, and I'm trying to remember the examples are on well, there. At least we can push people to that. But if we can't um, think of it. <laughs> you know, a decent sized a meaty quest would be a, a pretty good example. Um, Zamrak Heist might be a good example. Mighty Fall, maybe. Might be good, that Mighty sort of Fall. Um, the change we made to Barbarian Assault along that size. Um, yeah, things of that kind of nature. Yeah, something that's going to take us a substantial amount of uh, development time. But it's great to see that um, we're going to get a, a really nice, meat bit of content from Rune Lab. So guys, definitely uh, look forward to that. But of course, as I said, voting is now open for uh, the awesome ideas that are in February. So of course, you can still submit ideas and uh, don't be put off by the fact that there are still some on there with support. You can uh, you can steal the show by uh, if you get an <laughs> idea that's good enough, you will get the votes there for you. Um, so the next thing to talk about is uh, another future. Uh, piece of content you're working on. You've clearly got a lot on your plate. Um, what can you reveal today that uh, it's going to be another project for you? Um, so we're going to be working on a, another quest. Um, it, I will say first that it is at the very, very, very early stages of concept. Um, may or may not even be written on paper. And it's it is just about written on paper. <laughs> um, it's written on my paper. Um, <laughs> it is like it, it. it's uh, to put it simply, because again, don't want to tease too much. Of course, yeah. But um, it's a quest that's going to invo involve the arrival of a new god to RuneScape, um, and he's going to be uh, he's going to be laying claim to a town. Oh wow! So yeah. Other than that, very yeah. careful with the word. I think this is as far as we want to go for now. Yeah. Um, it is going to be like a decent sized quest, though. Um, it is. You know, again, much like um, perhaps like the Mighty Four or Dishonored Among Thieves, it's a a meaty sized quest, not a small one. Now I know I won't be doing the players justice if I don't try and poke some information out of you, but I guess the only thing that I really want to try and ask is uh, we had uh, um, uh, Mod Crisell and his team on here not so long ago, and they were talking about the the world event that they're running uh, with Tusker. Of course, they said that Tusker's mm -hmm. a god and on the way to to Gelenor. Uh, I guess all I wanted to say was, can we? Uh, when you say a god is, is coming to, to go on, is, is it? It is separate. To it is totally, totally, totally not, separate totally not Tusker. So there we go. We haven't confirmed yeah. what god it is, but we, we've slashed one off the list. definitely not Tusker. So it, it's a bit <laughs> short of you guys. So uh, uh, I've tried to help you out there just a little bit, but I'm not sure uh, how much that helped. Mm. That's, uh, it's great to know. So uh, guys, we've got, uh, we're going to look for a few last, uh, last few questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. 
But it sounds like you guys have got some really brilliant content to, to work on. Looking forward to see yeah, how that pans out. And obviously, next time we'll get you guys down uh, on the sofas. Um, Zamrak Heist, or should I say, uh, Dishonored Among Thieves, will be out. It'll be interesting to see how players uh, went along with that. And I'm sure uh, we'll be cl much closer to Easter as well. So uh, that might have uh, just gone out. And we'll be seeing a lot of these things that we've just talked about, uh, maybe with some uh, some concepts, maybe with some in-game demos. It'll be really exciting to see. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, last few questions from uh, Fractus, and he says, um, will there be an early bird bonus for the completion of the quest? Uh, not, with, not with this one? Not with this one. No, I don't think we've done early bird bonuses for a little while. <coughs> it, was, it was definitely something um, we tried. I don't know whether we'll be doing more of those. I'm probably not the person to be saying if we will, I won't, but uh, it's worth keeping asking. If that's what you enjoy and that's what you want, then uh, uh, definitely keep on asking for it over on the forums. Um, and another one from Twitter says, is Dishonor Among Thieves an only members quest? It is, yes. Yeah. That's unfortunate for, for some people, but of course, guys, uh, if you do want to uh, play through that, I do highly recommend getting into the members game. It's not just that you'll be able to play. There is tons of content um, for you there. So uh, last thing to say, guys, is just thanks very much for coming on, all of you. Uh, Thank it's you. been great to, to see you again, and uh, great to see your content. It's looking really exciting, and uh, I'm sure the players will agree with me. So uh, we'll wrap it up there for, uh, for this week, guys. Um, do tune in again. Um, we'll, uh, we'll let you know exactly what we've got coming up in the weeks to come soon. So uh, thanks very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you very soon. Bye. <laughs>